In this world, I'm an empress who once ruled over a beautiful kingdom. However, it has been invaded by Miyamoto and his undead warriors who have taken over the palace, infesting it with chaos. In order to restore peace and become ruler again, I must go on a journey to become strong enough to fight Miyamoto. I have three main objectives. First, I need to explore the haunted villages outside of the palace. Second, I want to befriend some of the beings that can assist me and provide me the special armor and weapons I need in order to fight Miyamoto. And lastly, I need to fight Miyamoto himself and take back my kingdom. If y'all enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and give it a like. Let's be a little ambitious and try to get 10,000 likes so that I know you guys want another one. After running away from the palace in order to escape Miyamoto and his soldiers, I found myself in a very dead and dull looking forest, meeting a strange looking pig that was carrying an empty chest. It seemed that this was some sort of village, but I didn't see anyone around. Just as I began to think that it was abandoned, I began being attacked by this ghostly figure. I didn't have a weapon, but I was able to kill him with my fists. However, there was another one coming towards me, so I quickly gathered some wood and I made a sword. I then proceeded to kill him. Or her. Or it. I gathered some more wood and I built up to one of the structures. Inside of it was a chest, which had today's sponsor. Rec Room is a virtual open world game that is completely free to play on all of your favorite platforms, such as iOS, Android, console, Steam, and VR. Rec Room has a large variety of things to enjoy and explore, consisting of over 12 million different rooms and games. These include fun mini games like laser tag, bowling, and charades. Also community creations such as Squid Game and even Poppy Playtime. <gasps> There's also rooms just to hang out in with your friends from all around the world. Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing is that it is cross-platform, meaning you can play on anything ranging from a phone to a VR headset, making it super easy to play with your friends. Rec Room also allows you to customize your character with cute outfits, allowing you to express your own style. And if you're feeling creative, Rec Room's Maker Pin allows you to design and build your own worlds to play in with others. Rec Room is a fun and welcoming place for everyone, so if you haven't already, be sure to check out the link in the description to download it. You may even find me there. It also had some potatoes, I like potatoes, and this very ugly looking chest plate. I'm not a fan. I noticed a spawner and chest above me, and inside of it was some bread, iron, and tons of bones. I wonder where they got those from. I continued searching each house, but all of the loot was the same, so it was kind of boring. I killed another ghost, and then I got hit by a splash potion of poison while building up. After nearly dying, I escaped through the side of the house. That night, I came face to face with undead creatures, and after realizing there was way more of them than I could handle, I ran back to one of the witch's huts, and I hid there for the night. The next morning, I was immediately greeted and attacked by a ghost who was obviously able to go through a wall. Duh, he's a ghost. I almost died, but I did successfully kill him. I was getting super low on food already, so... I apologize, pig, but you are a sacrifice that has to be made. He dropped a dungeon iron pickaxe, which was very generous of him. I decided to kill more pigs if it meant free loot, but the others weren't as giving. I began collecting some cobblestone, and I upgraded some tools, and I crafted a bit of iron armor. I was looking like a true warrior. I got some more wood, did some more cooking, and then I spotted a campsite in the distance. While running towards it, I noticed a gravesite, which I decided to check out. In the mausoleum, there was a chest with some loot, as well as a ghost. It almost immediately took me down to three and a half hearts, and I was sure this was the end. But then I remembered I had a potion of regeneration, and I quickly threw it down, and I began fighting back. My sword broke, so I used my axe, and finally I killed the ghost. Afterwards, I collected some more pork to cook. I went to check out the campsite, but there didn't seem to be anything there, just a campfire, which I took for the charcoal. I then noticed an opening in the side of the hill. I didn't know what to expect, so I cooked some more food and I crafted a new sword. And then I enjoyed the sunset. Before I knew it, the sun had completely set and there were mobs surrounding me everywhere. I was once again attacked by a ghost and after killing it, I switched the lever, which actually closed the door and it wouldn't reopen it. So I mined through the wall to discover the stones were infested. I killed the silverfish and then I proceeded inside. I was careful to examine the room for traps and trip wires, and after not finding any, I opened the chest. Inside there were some jades and a fortune 3 pick. Not too shabby. On the other side there was another chest, and inside it were some more jades and a better weapon. I continued my journey of finding a creeper head structure that ended up just being a statue. I then was shot at by these nasty birds. Probably the worst animals in the entire world. Not birds, but like, these birds. Just so annoying. I eventually found myself back in the witch village, and I again hid there for the night. 
After realizing there were witches stalking me outside the window, I decided this was enough and I would find a new place to stay for the next day. While running around, I noticed some kind of blue creature in front of me. I realized it was a baby dragon and it was all alone. She seemed friendly, so I took out some bones to befriend her, which ended up working. I now have a pet dragon. What do you guys think I'm gonna name her? In the distance, I noticed some chimney smoke and I decided to check it out. I noticed a girl standing in front of the house and I approached her. Ayoko offered to give me a dark katana and in exchange, I gave her some jades. A goblin trader also was interested, but I didn't really need anything from him. Sorry, little dude. Inside the house were some chests with armor, iron, gold, and more. Upstairs, there was a bed and some cake. I love cake. And in the attic, there was even another chest. I realized I missed a double chest downstairs, which had a name tag. I then officially named my dragon Ali. Afterwards, I finally slept in a bed. I think I go the next morning and Aoi and I went on our way to find more loot. While running around with her, I noticed a seemingly deserted house in the distance. After going closer to check it out, I noticed a little green warrior creature in front of me. And then I realized there were a dozen of them. Aoi killed the warrior and now I could jump in that hole, but I'm not going to. We went inside the house, which had a chest with a feather falling book and a bow. There were a flight of stairs that led down to a room with some kind of sand beast whom immediately attacked me with some kind of fire charge. Now, I knew if I ran in there, I would just die. I needed to be more strategic about this. After some thinking, I decided to make some glass in order to use it as sort of a shield against the Sandman. I went down the stairs, I braced myself, and then I ran in. I hid behind a wall and I blocked the fire charges with glass. I tried peeking out, but he immediately charged. I tried again and again to place another wall, but I kept failing. Finally, I decided to just place one a bit closer, which ended up working. However, I was not out of glass, so I ran back to the house. Upon going up the stairs, I ran into a skeleton and I noticed how many mobs surrounded the house. They began coming towards me and after running away, a creeper blew up, trapping us on the lower level of the house. Aoi then got hit by the stupid sandman. I dug up into the house and after scoping the area, I smelted some more sand. I went underneath the house again and I began to pillar up the glass walls. Finally, I broke through one and I hit the sandman a lot, like a ton. Finally, I killed him and he dropped a literal wooden sword. All of that for a sword that is about to break. Outside of the house, I noticed a hole in the ground with some kind of skeleton. I went down to explore, not realizing I was awakening him when I was hitting him. I panicked and I began to dig through the wall to avoid his wrath. I eventually dug it back open and I began being attacked by the multitude of mobs he was spawning. The Skeleton King himself did tons of damage and there was no way I would ever win this fight in a less baby way. I continued killing all the mobs and hitting the Skeleton King whenever I had the opportunity. Finally, he died, dropping his armor and his staff. I tried switching these levers, but they did nothing. I then put on some of the armor, and yes, I forgot to put on the crown, but just give it some time, I'll do it. Back on the surface, I attempted using the staff, but I was at a complete loss. I then nearly had a heart attack from a snake, I hate snakes, and then I realized I wasn't even wearing the crown. Afterwards, I spotted a dragon in the distance, and I suddenly had tons of confidence, so I went in, and I began fighting it. However, the dragon was a lot stronger than me, and a lot bigger than Aoi. He continued to fire some kind of lightning at me, taking me down to one heart, but I wasn't going to back out and I continued fighting. He got me low again and again, but finally, with one last hit, I was able to kill him. Unfortunately, there were approximately 1 million mobs surrounding the dragon, and uh, I, I tried my best to collect the scales, but honestly, not worth it. My dragon and I then went back home and I got another katana and then we began being attacked again by these stupid birds. I wanted to try on this mask, but uh, I can't see. I made an axe and I collected some wood and then a pickaxe and I made a new helmet. I hate, hate, hate climbing mountains. I think this is a hawk and I was a bit paranoid because it was circling me. Doesn't that mean it's gonna like eat me? I went further into the forest, finding this guy, and after killing him, these pillars did... something?
Okay, that was super anticlimactic. I ventured into the jungle and I found the scientist man who instantly threw up poison and harming potions on me. He got me down to half a heart, so I bowed him and I killed him before going deeper into the laboratory. But then I discovered a giant worm and some kind of mutated wolf slime. I went back down and uh, nope, nope, not happening. Creepy underground place, I'll be back. I then collected some bamboo, because why not? And then I found this weird house and I thought this little piece was super cute. Oops. I then found a pyramid, but after mining down, I decided I didn't want that headache. However, I soon found an adorable panda and I brought him home, which took a very long time. Never again. Nice tricks, bro. It was totally worth spending an hour walking you to this house. I decided to visit a town nearby my palace, which was rumored to be haunted. But I quickly realized these were not rumors at all. This ghostly woman began attacking me before she disappeared. Uh, hi. Are you okay? Hello? Oh my god. Calm down, calm down, calm down. It's okay. It's okay. Around the corner, there was some kind of green creature, but he seemed to be chill. She, however, was not. Please, ma'am, please, 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 please stop. After Miss Ghost Lady disappeared, I continued exploring. However, there was also another strange creature who immediately began attacking me with his sword. I continued swinging my sword and I tried my best to avoid all of his hits. abandoned houses before finding this giant smurf. Okay, maybe he's not a smurf. He swung his weapon, taking half of my health. risk being too close to him so I try to keep a distance but this was difficult because he slowed me after much fighting he finally died I went inside the temple to find a totem of undying and more diamonds I then found a pagoda being guarded by another ghost lady whom didn't know how to step over a ledge apparently With the diamonds I had found, I crafted full diamond armor. I then went back home to find my panda dancing around. I still needed more materials, and there were still a few more villages that were surrounding my palace, so I decided to go to one. Upon getting there, I discovered it had been overtaken by the undead warriors. I began fighting them and making my way into the village. But my health quickly deteriorated. Eventually, I realized I was not freaking wearing armor. What am I doing? I travel deeper into the village, killing as many of the creatures as possible. Thank you, Mr. Creeper. I collected some more of the loot and books inside the homes and I continued fighting my way through the streets. I then found another house with even more loot. I decided to craft a diamond pickaxe to collect one of the enchantment tables I had seen earlier. I then made my way into the large house's entrance, but I was quickly overwhelmed by Miyamoto's undead creatures. I 
tried my best to run away, making my way into the house, which was a complete mistake. Luckily, the totem saved my life. While putting the other totem in my hands, I fell and immediately was saved again. Nice waste of totems, Lindsay. I went up the stairs and I continued looking around to see if there was anything useful. Not much, but there were some enchantment books. Up in the attic, there wasn't really much of anything. However, I did find a prop 2 book and eventually a power 2 book. I then found the sign, which gave me hope for the rest of the 100 days. While making my way back home, these birds continued being annoying. And I then noticed a castle, quickly realizing it belonged to goblins. I began fighting some of the goblins that were defending the perimeter and I made my way inside. After being attacked, I quickly got down to half a heart. So I once again hid away. I decided to make a hole in the wall and bow down some of the goblins. However, they began making their way into the little pit and I had to run away. Finally, I spotted the king, but after being attacked by a ghost, I fell down, barely hitting the water. If the water had been one block further, I would have died. Back in the castle was a huge goblin man, and I wasn't sure if he was hostile or not, because he was kind of just staring at me. After getting a bit closer, I realized he was in fact not friendly. I traveled up the stairs in search of the king, but just found more annoying goblins. The next morning, I finally found the king. However, there never seemed to be an end to the goblins, and I once again was down to half a heart. Wait, did he just teleport? After an entire day of fighting, I finally killed him, and I collected his crown. Back home, my armor desperately needed repaired, so I did just that. I also felt it was time I needed to build my own house, so I collected tons of wood. I also forgot how annoying slimes are. Just the absolute worst. I traveled into the acacia, finding a village and exploring it a bit. While trying to find a place to call home, Aoi and I found these dragons, but they didn't seem to mind us. We then found another baby dragon, and I didn't want Aoi to be lonely, so I befriended him. Traveling through the forest, we came across more dragons, but I am a single mom, and I cannot handle any more right now. We then found the structure, and I decided to check it out. There seemed to be some villagers being held hostage. Honestly, I have no idea what these things are, like, whatsoever, but I did destroy them. I hope they weren't, like, important or something. I then set the villagers free, but they didn't even say thank you. Right beside the structure was another structure, and there were spawners all around it, but there didn't seem to be anything else. After finally finding a nice spot, I began construction on my house. While building, I noticed something in the chat. I love you, and I will always remember you. Alright, so, uh, this is awkward, but, uh, house tour? Okay, so first is the enchantment room, and then over here is my bedroom. We also have this lovely view. I went back to Ayoko's to get my panda, and I brought her to our new home, which took a long time, again. This is gonna take a while. Now, I needed lapis and levels for enchantments, so I decided to take my dragon with me, but after finding this bear chase him, I decided it would be far too dangerous. 
Okay, that's a strong bear. Okay, Mushu, you stay here. Mushu? Okay, I guess your name is Mushu. I went down to the caves and I began collecting some iron, smelting it, and crafting a bucket. I needed water so that I could collect some obsidian for a portal. Deeper in the caves, I found this little area being defended by pillagers. I collected some lapis and diamond and I checked out the chests. I immediately realized why it was being heavily guarded. I finally collected some obsidian and then I found another weird spot with another fortune 3 pick. A bit later, I found another area of the caves that had a plentiful of Oreos. Ore Oreos? Ores. A plen <laughs> Tons of ores, ranging from lapis to gold. Upon going a bit deeper, I, uh... I don't know if this was a glitch or if this is just literally a hole in the world. Either way, terrifying. I also found this bow called the Pink Scoundrel, which was said to have the chance to enrage mobs, but I didn't really know what that meant. Back home, I finally officially named Mushu and Yena. Very cute, you two. It was now time to build a portal, so I did just that, and I hopped right in. Upon getting there, I was immediately attacked by these bugs, which were annoying. I then proceeded to collect quartz for levels and fight some mobs. I really wanted over this lava pool and I didn't want to build, so I, uh, I enderpearled. Nice. I began collecting some gold before some piglins spotted me and began attacking me. After getting down to half a heart, I got hit again and my totem saved me. However, this did not stop me from collecting more gold. I gotta get that bank, you know? Pretty nearby, I found a fortress and I decided while I was here, I would farm some blazes. I decided to try out my new bow, but uh... Are they multiplying? I wasn't, and I'm still not sure if the bow caused them to multiply or what, but I did switch the bow I was using. Later, I discovered another structure, but the loot was really, really bad. And I then found an outpost type place. The piglins didn't seem angry by my presence, so I built up. But after opening the chest, I instantly realized that I had been a mistake and I jumped down. I jumped down even further, being followed, and I'm gonna be honest, I kinda panicked and I accidentally ate one of my enchanted golden apples. Super lame. Down in the caves, I collected some blackstone for the roof of my house, and I happened to find a spawner and some loot that I didn't really need. Back on the surface, I noticed the sky locked away, and I'm not sure if he's bad or good, but I did set him free. I then traded for a very long time. Now I had lost my portal, so I had to build a new one, and while I was on my way home, I noticed a mansion. However, I also heard a noise, which turned out to be a freaking crocodile. I went inside the mansion and I began checking it out. I don't really know why I was so paranoid something was going to sneak up on me here. Around the corner was one of these things, I don't remember what they're called, but uh, it spawns vexes, who I think do way more damage than they should. However, it was worth it because I got another totem. I then used the blackstone I got from the nether to build the roof of my house. And this is how it turned out. At this point, I was getting pretty desperate for better armor, so I traveled to the next village by my palace. I noticed a house, so I decided to approach it. Okay, this home is beautiful. Hello? Hello? 
I finally found a man wearing a mask and I tried talking to him. He recognized me and asked me what I had come there for. I explained I was in need of some assistance with getting armor. He explained he could help, but he would need a certain item to craft the armor, a wither skeleton head. I assured him I would be back and I made my way out of his home. I then traveled back to the nether, and there I fought and killed many wither skeletons. Not very exciting stuff, but uh, but after a day, I finally got one. He did as promised and he gave me the armor. I looked like a true warrior. I needed some arrows, so Mushu and I went out and I killed some chickens and I collected some gravel. There was still one village I needed to visit. I greeted Tomiaka and I told him I seeked a weapon strong enough to fight Miyamoto, a man powerful enough to control the dead. He explained the sword he had couldn't be used by anyone, and I would need to prove myself as a true warrior, bringing him back the dragon head. I told him I would be back, and I made my way out of the village. After making the Eyes of Ender, I began my search for the stronghold. While doing this, I was reminded of the underground creepy place. And after going down, I immediately changed my mind. Maybe we will explore it in another lifetime. While continuing my search, I noticed a boss health bar appear for the Kraken, and I was intrigued. I dove into the water and I began looking around. I noticed some skeletons and a sunken ship. I continued searching for the Kraken, but no luck. After a ton of swimming around, I finally found it. I approached him and, uh... Yeah. Goodbye. Not today. I mean, he's not hurting anyone, right? Luckily, right upon the shore was the location of the stronghold. I dug down until I finally found it. <gasps> okay, we're just gonna pretend that did not happen. After a bit more searching, I found the portal room and I killed the silverfish and I inserted each of the eyes into the portal before finally jumping in. After teleporting, I built a bridge over and I finally saw the dragon. He was kind of pretty. I began shooting down his healing pillars as well as building up and destroying them. While trying to shoot this one, the dragon hit me off, causing my totem to save me. Last hit, he ascended into the sky. I collected the XP as well as his or her egg, and then I teleported through one of these thingies. I found an in city almost immediately, but it was being guarded by some of these creatures. After making my way inside, I collected the loot. However, there was no ship, but there was this floaty thingy and I was super curious, so I built up and I enderpearled. Finding myself in some black goo and some kind of boss spawning. I realized it was the vengeful heart of ender, apparently. I don't know, that's what the health bar says. Kinda a mouthful. Anyway, I began battling him, which was pretty easy to do. But after killing him, another one spawned, which was much faster and stronger. After making my way up the wall, I realized I just needed to sit there and shoot him, so I did just that. He dropped a ton of powerful armor and swords, which were kinda heavy and big. I also got this cool head souvenir. After more searching, I finally found an in-city with a ship. I traveled down and I killed the shulker, but after hitting the slime, he copied my sword, which got me down to half a heart. 
way too close. I then traveled back home. What? I'm missing something? Oh yeah, the freaking head. I forgot the dragon head. The literal reason I traveled to the end. Anyway, after going back and getting the head, I went back to the village and I delivered it, trading it for this gorgeous katana. I thanked Tomiyaka and I admired myself for a hot minute. I then went back home in all of my new gear. I kind of looked like a real warrior. It was time to start doing some enchants finally, and I did a ton. Seriously, it was a lot. Tonight was the last night before I would be returning to my kingdom to take it back. Kind of bittersweet. The next morning, I said goodbye to Yena and Mushu, and I made my way to the palace. The outskirts were seemingly surrounded by undead creatures. I continued my way deeper into the palace, unable to avoid all the mobs that dominated every street. Night quickly became day as I fought off the monsters. It was now daytime, so I took a moment to appreciate the beauty of my palace. Just when I thought it was safe, I noticed a dragon in the distance. After defeating the dragon, I made my way into the throne room, which had once been mine. Right outside of it was Miyamoto, seemingly waiting for me, as if he knew this was coming. I took no time to waste, and I began fighting him. Finally, I won. I've taken back my kingdom. No longer were the streets filled with undead creatures, but instead there was laughter of people echoing through the palace. While taking a walk with Mushu, I noticed some steps leading up to a building I was unfamiliar with. I went inside and I traveled down the long flight of stairs and long hallway. At the end was some type of portal. I looked at Mushu and I knew I had no choice. I needed to know where it led to. 